Hey everybody, Silver here again with another Project El Tiris audio and gameplay update video. Now I know it hasn't been too long since the last time I spouted off about what I've been working on, but well, I make these when I got something to talk about, and as it happens, I got something to talk about. As you can see, this is a new map I've been working on while the naval map has been in semi-hiatus. It's been used to sort of preview slash debut the work I've done on the vehicle overhaul. Uh, now, as you can see here, I've taken some of the older models and added some detail, nothing over the top, and I've also made some new stuff. Now, new vehicles have not been my uh, main focus this time, mainly just on improving what I've already done. So, as I showed, new models, and uh, some new stuff to take advantage of features that have been recently added to RF tools that allow us to uh, sort of improve the way vehicles uh, behave. Oh, I was going to talk about the new vehicle AI, but uh, if I didn't know any better, I'd think those two, with their flagrant disregard for common driver's courtesy, are making fun of me. Nevertheless, that aside, as you can see, they're actually stopping to shoot at targets now, uh, rather than just bum-rushing. Which means that stuff like this, you know, self-propelled guns, uh, tank destroyers, other direct fire artillery, is actually viable in the hands of the AI. Now that they're not in such a big doggone hurry to capture the nearest point. On the other side, that means that having riders on the back is a little less viable because, you know, they won't drop them off until they're within range of a capture point, so... Having it sit there with, you know, fellows riding on the back is, uh, well, makes them pretty vulnerable. Unless they're just deciding to use them as some kind of applique armor. And for that reason, I've decided to split up the... Hang on. Well, so much for that. I didn't hear the, uh... The hit sound for some reason. I don't know. I, I heard it earlier, but sometimes it seems to not play anymore. I don't know what's up with that. So, right. Wow. That was a really good shot. Anyway, as I was saying, adjustments to vehicle behavior. They no longer just bum rush. Uh, due to that, I'm going to make versions of the tanks with and without riders. Like, you know how in the past you could sit on the back of the tanks? Well, that uh, no longer works so well. Uh, again, that behavior does enable vehicles like these. This particular example is just a, a chill one that has had its turret taken off, its hull modified, uh, engine moved forward, and a long-barreled version of the 50-something uh, millimeter from the uh, chest 2, the Cervanian medium tank, strapped onto the back. And uh, I figure that I'm going to make more uh, Chell 1 variants at some point down the line. Uh, you can see I've also done some minor detailing adjustment to the medium tank as well. Again, nothing huge. Uh, just, uh, you know, some you know, little, bit, little detail bits like uh, proper hatches and uh, small details that I, I think really help uh, with the general aesthetic without being too overly detailed. You come with me. We're going for a ride, you and I. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Christ, the nerve of some people. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, as you can see there, I now have animations for gun recoil. So that's something I've added to tanks. Uh, you've also seen the tracks, probably. I'm not using the new geometric tracks supported in the new version of Ravenfield Tools. I, I could not figure those out. Rather, I'm using the old scrolling texture method, but with an actual track texture rather than that uh, sort of generic looking thing uh, that came with Ravenfield Tools. Now, uh, on the note of uh, the recoil animations, I've also added something to the anti-tank guns, both uh, this new Cervanian anti-tank gun and the old uh, uh, Headache RF-37, where in addition to the barrel recoiling, 
uh, the whole carriage sort of uh, slides back a bit. You know, nothing too exaggerated. It, it, it doesn't go too far out of place. Uh, but, you know, just a little effect to make it look a bit less static. Let's see if I can't pick that guy off. That reminds me of another feature I've been uh, meaning to add is proper graduated gun sights. And you, see, you can also see there's uh, been changes to the particle effects. Like when you fire, it kicks up dust, and there's no, um, you know, I've, I've been trying to phase out that. Oh, crap. Get out! Get out! Get down! Get down, you fool! Is he still with us? Yeah, he's okay. He's okay. Right, uh, haven't done it with the weapons yet, but with vehicles, I'm trying to phase out the vanilla muzzle flash effect. The one that looks a bit like... The one that looks a bit like it's from Team Fortress 2 or some such. And, uh, replace it with, you know, something that looks maybe a bit more... I hesitate to say realistic, but less cartoony, I guess. Uh, see if I can't get into position here and pick them off. You have to forgive me, I'll just... There you go. You too, uh, here you go. This one's on the house. So, yeah, new particle effects, new tracks, uh, some slightly upgraded models, animations. It hasn't been applied to all the vehicles yet, uh, mainly just the ones seen on this map. So, the idea is that I'm testing all the new stuff for the vehicle overhaul on this map, and then uh, I'm going to see what people think of it, going to see what I think of it, and, uh, you know... If, uh, you know, there's any issues, I can, you know, fix those. And then update the vehicle pack as well as all the old maps and all the vehicles on there. Uh, that's not to say, by the way, that the Headache vehicles haven't gotten any love. So let's have a look at those. So now that we're at Red Spawn, we can see these vehicles up close and not burning. And uh, Exhibit A, we have the Mathis, which has undergone quite a change. The bow turret no longer looks like an afterthought. It has a more distinctive main turret, and it's also got that builder's plate, if you didn't catch that on the glassy. Some people might say it still looks like a ram or a samwa, but, uh, well, that's on them. And, uh, as you can see here, there have been some modifications to the Amsel. Uh, again, nothing huge, just little details like, uh, hinges on the hatches, a uh, more believable engine deck, uh, little toe clevises. Uh, minor details that oddly add quite a lot. And you can see the revised version of the Taba here. See, uh, the original version of the Taba I made, you had that little cupola on top that I really don't think could have fit the crew for an RF-37. And moreover, I I'd say this one looks a little more homemade, because that's the whole thing about the Taba. Basically, they took uh, Amso hulls modified them in a tractor factory and here we have an old quote-unquote favorite uh, the Lonsbrig. Uh it's undergone not a whole lot because I don't think uh, there's a whole lot to add to it again you got a builder's plate on the front there uh, it, it seems like the Chergarian or Bressian thing to do um, it's only the Trigarian tanks that have them right now. I, I, I figure Bressian, larger Bressian tanks might have them. But uh, something like the Lonsbrig and the Mathis, yes, definitely. And uh, another thing I forgot to mention, but you've probably seen already, is the exhaust smoke. Speaking of Bressian tanks, here's a look at the new... Well, not so much new PC4. Not a whole lot's been added. Just some more beveling on the uh, some of the corners, and uh, very small details. You know, the PC4 was you know a newer model that I think had uh, some detail in the right places. But again, small little things like hinges add surprisingly a lot to the aesthetic, uh, without you know betraying that sort of simple look for you know that Ravenfield really has. Also, if you look around at the landscape here, this uh, shows 
another uh, test that this map represents, and that is using external programs to uh, design maps rather than just Unity. Uh, so basically I made a sort of semi-randomly generated uh, terrain here. And, uh, you know, that's something I'm trying out. Let's see if I can get, get a screenshot right here as well. I, I need more screenshots for the, uh, the workshop file when it, uh, when it gets posted. Anyway, so using an external program to make uh, landscapes and then sort of building a map into that. That was something I was trying with this. Dang, there goes my squad. Can't capture this point. Ah, oh, dang it! Oh, there I go. We'll see if we can't get a little more intimate with the Mathis now. You come with me. Let's mount up. And go for a spin. Are you, are you in now? Or okay, he was in. Right, let's go. Follow this dude. Into the mouth of death, or whatever the heck. Now there was one thing I was considering on doing. That was making tanks with full interiors. Not to replace the, uh, the main ones, of course, but just as their own thing. But, well then I realized that, uh, the only way bots do that behavior where they stop to shoot, which I prefer, is if the driver controls the gun as well, so that would mean they wouldn't do that. I was in talks with Blip a while back about contributing to, uh, you know, contributing a version of PA for the Ravenfield multiplayer project. Uh, haven't heard back from him. Last I heard from him was that he was having trouble getting vehicles working. That was, uh, still a work in progress, but, you know, if I'm able to if I have the time after he does that, it'd be really neat to do like some crewed vehicle battles. By crewed, I mean C-R-E-W-E-D, not C-R-U-D-E. No, I mean, this... These vehicles may look crewed, but I mean, with a crew. Let's see, speaking of which, uh, kind of an unrelated point that I just want to throw out there. If there's any of you folks who are getting Ravenfield from anywhere but Steam and therefore getting my mods from a third-party site uh, I can't help you guys I've, I've gotten a lot of requests for help and uh, you know a lot of bug reports and uh, technical issues sent my way but if it's with a version of my mods that has been stolen by some guy and reposted to another site, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't do anything about it. If you're using a version of Ravenfield that has been, uh, you know, in turn pirated and is not the official version from Steam, then I, I don't know, man, I, I can't do anything about that. Also, let me just say that I get that there's more to piracy than just, you know, greed or malevolence. I understand there's issues of availability involved in, you know, localization, but come on. Ravenfield is a $15 early access game being made by one or two guys. That feels a little low. Oh, dang it. Uh... I think this is it for me. Come on, let's get out of here. I'll continue my piracy talk later, let's get to cover. Ah, uh, crap. Come on, get to the riverbed. Get down. No! They're all dead, except for one. This will be our final stand, gentlemen. So, yeah. Uh, please do not decompile and redistribute my mods. There's nothing I can actually do about it except not post stuff. And I want to continue posting stuff.
And I think other people want me to continue posting stuff, but if people just steal it and use it to support pirated copies of the game, I can't continue doing that. Anyway, let me show you one more part of the vehicle overhaul and this map. Now, given that the second Leerzag War would have been dragging on into winter at this uh, at the time this map would be set, most of the maps I'd be making should be snowy. Uh, but that's probably going to get boring for everyone. So I'm making uh, snowy and not snowy versions of certain maps like this one, I figure. And uh, for that, I figured I might as well also make snow camo for the hats at last. Uh, the Cervanians already had uh, snow camo. Do I have everyone aboard? Okay. So yeah, something I'm thinking of doing for the vehicle overhaul is releasing camo vehicle packs. So you have the regular Hedic vehicles and Cervanian vehicles packs, but also separate packs that have the vehicles in different camo patterns. Uh, starting with winter, maybe some others. I don't know yet. I'll, I'll figure it out. I got people supporting me? I think so, yeah. So, let's also have a look at the Lons Brig and uh, do some breakthrough sometime this week. Guess I should have brought Travel Bingo. You know, I will say this. These little details I've added definitely do make it feel a bit more substantial. You know, it feels like you're driving around in this great big hunk of metal. More so than the old version. Now people have been complaining that uh, for such a massive and slow vehicle it tends to die pretty easily, but that kind of reflects uh, a more true-to-life version of a super heavy tank in that, um, well... They're not Bane Blades. They were pieces of junk in real life, and uh, this one would have been no different. Of course, I had to make it somewhat viable in Ravenfield, but... Are they behind me? Yeah, I guess they got behind me. So, I mean, this one is at least somewhat viable. It is uh, very prone to being ambushed or bombed, but... You know, if it gets in close, it's got those machine guns on uh, each corner, and so it can handle itself pretty well in close quarters. It's, uh, you know, when it gets jumped and doesn't have proper cover that, uh, you know, it tends to have trouble. On a completely unrelated note, there's a conversation I've had a couple times, one fairly recently, about the subject of Project Alteris becoming its own game. And I will say this, that's never gonna happen. Sorry, if I knew how to do that, I wouldn't be modding Ravenfield, which I only mod because it is exceptionally forgiving for people like me with very little technical know-how. Now, I have heard the argument that, oh, you know, you can find someone who can uh, make it for you. It's like, no, no, it doesn't work like that. I don't have anything to pay him with. And before you say, oh, you know, just find someone who's passionate about it, let me make something abundantly clear. You don't do that to people who are skilled. You know, passion doesn't pay the bills, as they like to say. Uh, you don't pay someone in exposure. Because, you see, creative people, creative and skilled people, what they're passionate about is bringing their ideas to life. I'm very much the same way. Let me get a screenshot right here. Again, need them for the workshop page. That's right. I feel the same way. You see, I learned how to do all this stuff. Admittedly, not a whole lot of very hard stuff, but I, I learned to do what I needed to do for Project Alteris and the like because it's something I wanted to do. Whereas people ask me to do stuff for them, it's like, I don't care about that. That's not what I'm passionate about. And that's another conversation I've had a couple times, uh, specifically in that brief window when I was taking commission. Like, there were some folks who were downright offended 
that I was asking for money to make something that someone wanted, rather than just taking every request and making it to the best of my ability, rather than doing what I want to do. Is the argument that as someone who is doing something because he wants to, do I not owe the community whatever they want? You know, I'm doing it out of passion. That means I should be passionate about doing it for everyone. It's like, no, sorry, doesn't work that way. And so in the same vein, if I went up to someone and uh, asked him to do something for me because he's passionate about it or she's passionate about it, uh, they could justifiably tell me to go die. Yeah, see, just like that. Anyway, uh, that does it for today. This map will be out soon. You'll take care. Talk to you next time.